Cannabidiol, also known as CBD, is a non-psychoactive component of cannabis that gives the sedative effect to the high experienced. Amongst its numerous functions, CBD has been shown to have anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects. It helps fight diabetes, bacterial infections, and malignant tumors. This compound is also a nerve protectant and has well-documented antipsychotic and anxiety-reducing effects. There's quite a lot of CBD in that particular one as well, cannabidiol, which is a, another cannabinoid, a non-psychoactive cannabinoid, which we think is actually a very important component of the medicine. We're fascinated by this stuff, which you know, has tremendous potential as an anti-inflammatory, yes. but also, rather surprisingly, as an antipsychotic. So, hold on, you, you're telling me that CBD could be a treatment for psychosis? It's, isn't that ironic? Uh, with all the sort of uh, tremendous publicity around the link with cannabis smoking and the potential of increasing the risk of psychosis, here we have a component of the plant which itself is antipsychotic. The cannabis plant has been bred for decades to maximize the amount of THC. That gives the plant the strongest psychoactive effect, effect for the least amount of product. Now, in doing this, we've bred the other cannabinoids out of the plant or down to minuscule amounts. And each of those cannabinoids that has been bred down to minuscule amounts has its own medicinal quality or medicinal properties. So we've lost a lot of those other properties. Myself and a, a group of doctors have been asking growers to bring back CBD into the plant because cannabidiol, along with some of these other minor cannabinoids such as cannabigerol and cannabichromine, have shown to have a lot of anti-cancer properties. Tetrahydrocannabivarin, or THCV, has been found in significant amounts mostly in South African and some Thai strains of grass. High concentrations of THCV will make the high come on quicker but last for less time. This chemical compound may eventually prove to be a useful treatment for type 2 diabetes. THCV has been shown to have a protective, preventative effect against malignant tumors. Cannabichromine, or CBC, is a low-level cannabinoid. Though little research has been done, scientists believe CBC may have an antidepressant effect, as well as the ability to reduce inflammation. CBC strongly inhibits tumor growth in leukemia and breast cancer. Faced with all these new discoveries, one is brought to question what stops marijuana from being legalized for medical use all across the country. And it's not only doctors calling for legalization. I was opposed to the medical marijuana initiative because it created a, a, a morphodon. You've got marijuana that's legal and you've got marijuana that's illegal. And therefore, you are, you've got a, a built-in problem as how do you determine uh, who's legal and who isn't. And, of course, uh, with it being illegal, it's a built-in government price support. So as long as it's illegal, there's going to be money in it. If it was decriminalized, uh, you know, everybody could grow in their backyard and nobody would go by ripping them off at gunpoint or any other thing because it wouldn't be worth anything. We wouldn't have to worry about people that were illegally transporting marijuana um, uh, we, we would know you would have a license from the state. We may contact with you coming down Highway 101, for example, with a trunk load of marijuana. If we were to stop you for a minor traffic violation and, uh, and detect the odor of marijuana, you could simply produce credentials indicating that, that you have a right to do this, that you're, sa you're sanctioned by the state to make, this, to make this happen, or licensed by the state. I think it would be very, very beneficial to law enforcement. After becoming a permanent fixture of the urban panorama in California, Oregon is beginning to open the first public venues for medical marijuana smokers. We're at the Cannabis Cafe today. This is a place where cardholders can come and medicate out of public view. So I have patients that are in stage five of cancer. We have people that are, were using AIDS medicines, the cocktails that are so, they just destroy your organs and everything else. And people were expecting them to die. Their families were just ready for them to go away. But then they started using medical marijuana and their appetites came back they left some of those pharmaceuticals that were so harsh many times I've gotten calls from people who were at OHSU or at the Veterans Administration Hospital here in Portland and they couldn't medicate out of public view they had gone through procedures for four to six hours and because of that they needed a place to use their medicine they had to go to an alley they had to go to the back seat of their car 
that was unsafe. And so we created this place for them, for us, a niche where we could use our medicine out of public view and enjoy each other. We're social creatures. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the federal level, they're still clinging to a more archaic view. Is there a better way, and some people have suggested, looking into a system of legalization that might be effective in stemming the tide of drugs from Mexico and then the border wars and the immigration problems from Mexico? Have you considered this as a possibility? I think anybody uh, who looks at this problem considers it, and ultimately when you look at it, rejects it. Let me ask there you about too the many way... People, uh, I'm sorry, but there are too many uh, individuals, uh, both parents and, uh, and others, who have lost their lives to drugs to, to give a ready answer that it should be legalized. Name me a couple of parents who've lost their, their, their lives to marijuana. Can't. Exactly, you can't, because that hadn't happened. That, that, and there hadn't been a wave, because that's been a constant thing in America since Harry Anslinger, because African Americans used it and saw it as something that was crippling and, and, and gave it to the Latin Americans and put an ethnic tone to it. When have we, don't we, is there some time we're going to see that we ought to prioritize meth crack, cocaine, and heroin, and, and d deal with the drugs that the American culture is really being affected by and lives are being lost. That's not to say that we can't use cannabis as medicine, but as a plant, its quality, its purity, its strength, its consistency, it's difficult to regulate. And because of that, it's not ever likely to be reinstated into the pharmacopoeia. I think the greatest hurdle is that we need to... to get Congress to remove cannabis from the Controlled Substances Act. It's just absurd that cannabis is still there. It has enormous medicinal value. It's not addictive. It doesn't have a significant withdrawal syndrome. syndrome. And it certainly is not really a menace to society. The anti-cancer qualities of marijuana appear to have been known to the U.S. government for over 30 years. In a 1974-75 Medical College of Virginia study led by Dr. Albert Munson, they discovered that THC slowed the growth of three kinds of cancer, lung, breast, and virus-induced leukemia. The Virginia study was shut down, and all further cannabis tumor research was abandoned. Just as I said, the number of times that, that all of the available literature on marijuana safety and effectiveness has been reviewed by august government appointed clinic bodies and have come back with the same conclusion that it's safe and it's you know useful and that that information gets ignored the problem remains though that nobody in congress wants to be labeled soft on drugs but as the states begin to legalize or continue to legalize the medicinal use of cannabis i believe there will be a tipping point where the nation will be ready to change the law and allow people their right to use cannabis freely.